everybody, my name is Mads, and it's been a minute since I did a disability-related video on this channel. Obviously, I never stopped being disabled, I just had other things on my mind at the time, but one of my absolute favorite, if not my absolute favorite, disability-related channels on YouTube is Gem from Wheels No Heels. I think that she does an absolutely amazing job explaining what it's like to be a disabled person in a world that is not made accessible for us. I think that she is a very classy person and she does an amazing job explaining what it's like to be a disabled person, especially a wheelchair user, in a world that, although it claims there are accessible spaces, generally isn't made for people with disabilities. I mean, just think of some places that you've maybe attended that claim that they were ADA compliant. All right, so maybe they have a ramp so that you don't have to worry about stairs. Or they have elevators so you don't have to worry about that. But there's no audio descriptors for blind people. Or if you're a deaf person, there's no captions on anything. So you have to constantly ask an interpreter or someone that you are with what's going on. People forget that there is a variety of disabilities in the world and Jem's most recent video from a few days ago was very interesting. It is a topic that I believe I've discussed a couple of times on my TikTok and I also discuss it at length in person with my real life friends offline a lot. But it's not something I see a lot of people on the internet talking about too much apart from on like Facebook groups for disabled people. But again, one of the things I love about Jem is that she is a great person to watch whether you are disabled or a disability advocate. You don't have to be disabled to enjoy her content because she explains things to people who are non-disabled to help them understand better why the world is so difficult for us sometimes. So I wanted to kind of react to her most recent video because what she was discussing was the fact that only certain types of disabilities seem to be the type that people find acceptable. For example, she used a little boy who was in the news who needed a prosthetic arm. And unfortunately, the NHS could only give him, you know, the most basic bare bones one. Now, I have a cousin who is an amputee and he's like, yeah, there's a reason I don't wear my prosthetic leg. Because if you cannot afford one of those cool bionic ones or something, or one that is like perfectly fitted to you. They're wildly uncomfortable. They're painful. They're a pain in the ass. And unless you absolutely have to have it to get by, it's generally just easier to not use it. But this boy apparently was in sports and it was going to make things infinitely easier for him to have access to having two arms, which makes sense. So apparently there was like a GoFundMe and everything and everyone spent all this money to help this kid get this amazing like futuristic looking prosthetic arm. Now I think this is amazing. I think regardless of what your disability is, whatever aid you choose to have or don't choose to have is the individual's choice. You don't have to use a prosthetic at all. If you're like, fuck it, I don't need two arms. I don't care. I am fine and I'm owning this, that's perfectly reasonable and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. If you are someone with mobility problems and your doctor's like, oh, I think you should be using a wheelchair 100% of the time or at least like 90% of the time and you're like, I really, you know, in my body don't feel I need it that often. I think I only need it 45% of the time. That's up to you. You know your body's limits. Just make sure that it's not that you're ashamed of the aid and that it is because you legitimately don't need it. And this leads into the other part of her video that she was like, when it comes to things like people with prosthetics competing in sports, whether it's running track with a prosthetic leg or playing basketball with a prosthetic arm or something, people always make this inspiration porn about it, which we could do a whole video on inspiration porn and why that's fucked up. But most people who are disability advocates already know why it's weird. To sum it up, if you see a video or an article circulating where there is a disabled person participating in something that is totally normal for non-disabled people to participate in, and you're sitting here going, oh, they're so inspiring, you need to unpack why you're feeling that way. Why is it that if an able-bodied person 
is able to do something like participate in wrestling, you know, professional wrestling, but someone in a wheelchair decides to participate in it or someone with like MS decides to participate in it and they're good at it. They're just as good at it as a non-disabled person. Why are they so inspiring? But the able body person isn't. I hope this is making sense. Basically, it it's weird. By thinking that that person is inspiring, even though they're doing nothing outside the norm for an able-bodied person, you are essentially saying that you don't think that their worth is as high as the able-bodied person. You are essentially saying that it's inspiring because you think they should just be sitting at home alone, being disabled on the couch and not having a life. And them actually going out and doing something able-bodied people do is absolutely shocking and wondrous to you because you thought that they just sat on the couch all day. Even if you don't mean it like that, even if you don't actively think that, saying that someone is inspiring just because they're participating in normal day-to-day -day life that non-disabled people do is offensive to the disabled community. If you wouldn't say something about a non-disabled person, don't say it about a disabled person. But moving on. So everyone's so inspired and happy for this kid for getting his prosthetic arm and, you know, making his life better for himself because that's what he needed. But then we come to mobility aids and also in my uh, personal experience, hearing aids. Any kind of disability aid that is generally thought to the public to be for the elderly. Suddenly, it's not so inspiring anymore. Suddenly, it's shameful, it's embarrassing, it's not a positive thing. You have parents who question their child needing these things. You have adults in someone's life thinking, that, like, why Why do you have to do this around me? Like, why are, why are you using that? You're too young to need this. Hell, even some doctors try to argue with patients that they don't need some kind of disability aid because they don't think they're old enough, which is bizarre to me because you're literally a doctor. You know that anyone of any age can end up with some kind of disability. But this is just an unfortunate fact. You know, I've been using mobility aids since I was in middle school, since I was a young teenager, because that's when you know, my pain hit a point where I was basically incapacitated. I've always suffered with pain throughout my entire life. I've always needed surgeries to correct all these huge tumors inside me and stuff. And although I lived every moment of my life in some variety of pain for as long as I can remember, it was in middle school that it kind of reached its peak. And I was like, I legitimately can't even walk from the car into the school building because it hurts so much. And at the time, even though I had a doctor that was kind of a moron, even he was like, yeah, there's no shame in going and just getting a cane from the pharmacy and using it. If that's what you need to get by and that's going to help you live a normal and fulfilled life, do it. So I did. I, I asked no questions about it. I was not upset or ashamed about it whatsoever. I just went to the pharmacy. I got the cheapest but nicest looking cane I could. I think it was like magenta and chromey, so it looked really neat and it matched my aesthetic at the time. And I started taking it everywhere with me because I needed it everywhere with me. When I was in the supermarket, I would use the mobility scooters, especially if no one else was using it, because it just made it easier for me to get around because even with the cane, there was a limit to how long I could walk without aid. And I think that I was very lucky that I felt no shame or embarrassment in needing these things when I was only like 13, 14 years old. And the reason for it was my grandmother was one of my best friends. Anyone who's close to me in real life knows how close we were. And she had been disabled in some capacity since the 70s. That was when she had her first brain surgery. And it caused a lot of neurological problems with brain-to-body communication. So she would get incapacitated a lot. And she didn't let it frustrate her. If she got lost or something, she would just call and be like, I'm on this road. Do you know how I get home? And she would just ask for help as she needed it. Because growing up, her mom had her hands full with like eight kids and there wasn't enough money or time to go around to take her to the doctors when she was in chronic pain. 
So she just had to shut up about it. She just had to pretend she wasn't in pain and carry on those, you know, womanly duties of the time, you know, growing up in like the 50s and 60s where it was like, oh, don't talk about being in pain. Just make sure the house is clean for when your husband comes home. Just make sure that dinner is cooked and ready. And she told me there were times when my grandpa was at work that she would literally be like running her finger along the mantelpiece, making sure there wasn't a speck of dust. And she would be crying and bent over from how much pain she was in. But she knew this was an expectation of her because of social norms. So she did it anyway. But as soon as society flipped a little bit more, she started going, you know what? No, I deserve a break. If I'm in pain, I'm not going to worry about this. If I need help, I'm going to ask for it. And that's exactly what she did. She didn't care about whether or not using mobility aids made her look old. She just did it. And I distinctly remember at one point she had a bad spike in blood pressure bad enough that she needed to go to the emergency room. So I was in there with her because I'd been visiting her at the time. And she was like joking around about, ooh, my nurse is hot and stuff at the time, just being herself. And when my dad and my grandpa stepped out of the room and it was just us alone, she was like, come here. And so I bend down to listen closer to her and she's like, I noticed that out of all the grandkids, you are the most like me, not just personality wise, but in terms of the fact that at a young age, you are already having a lot of pain and a lot of mobility issues. Make sure whoever you end up spending your life with you tell them everything that you need. Make sure you're honest about when you need help. Don't hold back. And then she wrapped up the conversation by telling me, never let anyone else's perception of you using any form of help that you need dictate how you feel about yourself. Never be ashamed of using whatever you need in order to get by in a society that's not built for you. And even though that conversation took place years ago, it stuck in my mind and I have never once let anyone make me feel ashamed. I've had family members and now ex-friends and coworkers all try to question whether or not I actually needed the aids that I need. And going back to that video that Jem made, it's really weird because if I had become an amputee, and I decided to get a prosthetic arm, no one would have batted an eye. No one would have had an issue. I have had glasses since second grade. No one's ever had an issue with that. No one's ever questioned, do you really need to use glasses though? Is your eyesight really that bad? Or do you just want to look cool to fit in with the aesthetics of the youth today? Like, no one does that. But the moment I needed a wheelchair, the moment I needed crutches, the moment I needed a cane, that was seen as a problem. And my best friend is deaf and has had hearing aids since like pretty much the start of his life. And he goes through the same thing of people questioning whether or not he actually needs those. And I'm like, in what world <laughs> would someone, if you're in the United States, go through the trouble of paying for all the doctor's appointments necessary to prove that you are deaf enough to need hearing aids? And then buying those expensive ass hearing aids. Who would do that? And since he's in the UK, why would you put yourself through the hell of trying to get them through the NHS if you didn't actually need them? Also, they would be annoying if you didn't need them. They amplify the noise around you. That would get on your nerves so quickly if you didn't actually need that. It's weird. And people always try to act like, oh, you have earphones in during class or something. It's like, in what way does a hearing aid... Look, anything like a headphone, even with the Bluetooth headphones that you have now, there's a distinctive difference between a hearing aid and those. You're just being willfully ignorant and weird about it for no reason. And I've never understood it, but a lot of people in the disabled community like to tell people who are newly disabled, don't be ashamed of needing a mobility aid. Don't be ashamed of needing a hearing aid or a white cane if you're losing your eyesight. Don't be ashamed to use these accessibility tools just because society is being funny about it. But at the same time, we need to remember why they're being funny about it. Part of it is internalized ableism. And the reason that people have internalized ableism, even if they don't mind anyone else around them using those pieces of equipment, even if it doesn't bother them, if they 
go past another younger disabled person who's using the exact same thing they need to start using, it's different for them because they're like, but I shouldn't need this right now because all through my life, society has told me this is for old people and old people alone. And so they're ashamed. They're like, well, I am not old, so people are going to make a big deal out of this, which they do, and they shouldn't. And it causes that internalized ableism. And we need to start breaking that down. And the thing is, it can't be just up to the disabled community. Yes, we're a great start. We're a great resource for why it's ignorant to think this way, why it's really ableist and obnoxious to see an older person with a wheelchair in public or with hearing aids or a white cane or anything else like that and just go, ah, they're old, it's whatever, and continue on your day. But then if you see a younger person using the same equipment, you decide to stop them and become entitled to private information about their disability and how they came to be that way. It's just wildly inappropriate. And the only reason they're asking those prying questions is because they perceive a younger person that they think shouldn't be using that. Why shouldn't they? If you see a three-year-old in a wheelchair who is visibly disabled or who has cancer and is going through treatments that are causing them to need it, you're not going to question that either. It's like there's this weird middle ground people just can't accept for some reason where if you are between like teenager years and your 50s, if you're seen using hearing aids or a white cane or crutches or a wheelchair, suddenly it's a big problem and you must be lying. And if you're not lying, you have to prove you're not lying. And this isn't even just in person. Like we've all had to deal with people demanding to know what our diagnosis is, demanding to know why we're using what we're using. But it happens online too. Look at all the log cow and kiwi farms threads that exist trying to prove that Someone on YouTube or TikTok is faking their disability. And it's like, okay, what are you getting out of that exactly? If the person is faking it, fair enough that they should suffer the consequences of their actions. It's messed up to fake a disability, especially if you're taking resources away from real disabled people. But we will handle that. The disabled community will handle that. We will determine whether or not the person is actually faking. And if we find proof that they are, we will deal with what the fallout should be. It's none of your business if you're not in the community. And what do you get out of finding the faker? All that happens is there ends up being this huge witch hunt all through disabled YouTube and disabled TikTok where, well, we caught one of them, so there must be more people lying. And they start just hunting down anyone with a certain subscriber count or follower count and going like, oh, oh, that person's in a wheelchair, but I just saw their leg move. They're a faker. They're a faker. Or I saw them once in public and they weren't using their crutches. They're a fucking faker. And it's like, how do you know? You do not live in their body 24-7. Maybe that day they were having a good mobility day or a good pain day and they wanted to enjoy the freedom of being able to walk without mobility aids that day. Maybe if they're in their house and they're not using a hearing aid, but they're laughing in a TikTok about a movie, they're just reading the subtitles. It's not that they're faking being deaf. And especially when it comes to chronic pain and ambulatory wheelchair users, this gets especially bad with the non-disabled people in the world because people still truly do not understand pain diseases and disorders, and ambulatory wheelchair or crutch usage. Not everyone who uses mobility aids is paralyzed. For one, there's several ways to be paralyzed. There's more than one paralysis diagnosis you can receive depending on what has happened where in your spine. It's always strange to me when people assume if you're in a wheelchair, you must be paralyzed because Well, if your 70-year-old grandma just has more pain in her legs now from age and she's using a wheelchair, you know she's not paralyzed. Like, you've met people in your life who use a wheelchair who aren't paralyzed. Why is it so weird then when you see someone in public in one and their leg twitches a bit and you're just like, oh, faker, faker, faker. It's really, really ignorant. People use them who have pots 
which is a disorder that can make you just faint out of the blue. It's dangerous if you're out in public someplace, whether you're alone or with a companion, and you just pass out onto the pavement and hit your head or something. So a lot of people with POTS choose to use a wheelchair when they're out in public so that if they have a fainting spell, they won't become injured. Even if they fall off the wheelchair, they have a lot less of a fall that way. So it's understandable why they would want that. People with epilepsy sometimes use them because even if they're medicated, sometimes you will just have a random seizure. And just like with POTS, it's a safety measure that they're like, yeah, I could technically get up and walk right now if I wanted to. But if I have a seizure when I'm at this concert or when I'm at this theme park or something or just out getting groceries, I want Again, less of a fall to happen so I won't become seriously injured because the seizure is bad enough on its own. People with MS and fibromyalgia and Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome are not paralyzed, and all of them tend to use wheelchairs when they're in public. Whether it's a bad pain day or a good pain day, when you have any of those disorders, you can wake up in the morning feeling fantastic, being able to go up and down the stairs with absolutely no problem, you know, you're having a great day, and then you decide, let's go out someplace, let's leave the house, let's have a fun day, and you just decide to take your wheelchair anyway because, well, halfway through your little outside-the-house excursion, your pain could massively set in or your hypermobility, and you could end up incapacitated and unable to get back to your car. So it just makes sense to be careful and have the mobility aid in case of an emergency or in case of an event where you will need it, it's easier than having someone run out to your car and try to get it for you. Society, especially non-disabled people, really need to stop making assumptions about the disabled community already. And they need to start actually going to the source and speaking to us before deciding whether someone's faking or whether or not a certain type of accessibility aid is embarrassing or acceptable. There's no such thing as an access aid that is unacceptable. There's no such thing as a person of a certain age who shouldn't be using an accessibility aid. If you feel, regardless of status of diagnosis or type of diagnosis, that your life will improve tenfold by using an accessibility aid, use it. Acquire it by any means that you need to and use it regardless of what anyone in your life says because at the end of the day, your doctor, your family, your friends, your coworker, your fellow student body, none of these people are living inside your body. Charts don't say everything. Living with the person doesn't explain everything. Only you know what it feels like to be inside of your body, so you need to be the one who makes that determination. And understand there will always be people who don't get it and who behave inappropriately. That's an unfortunate part of being part of the disability community. But that is not your problem to deal with. That is not your fault that that person is ignorant. And when those moments come, you have a choice. You can educate them on the spot if you feel inclined to do so and if you feel comfortable enough to do so where say that someone sees you in public and you're in a wheelchair and they're like, why are you using that? You can educate them and be like, well, anyone of any age can become disabled and can need use of a wheelchair. I am one of those younger people who happens to need one. And for future reference, it's really inappropriate to ask people why they're using an accessibility aid and then just go on your way. If you feel comfortable with it, you can discuss your diagnosis with that person. Some people don't mind it too much. Some people see it as a part of that education, but understand that not everyone does. A lot of people are really uncomfortable, but if you're comfortable with it, by all means, go ahead and discuss that with that person. Or you can just choose to move away from the situation, just get away from them by any means necessary, and if they won't leave you alone and you're feeling uncomfortable, you know, combat that however you need to to make yourself feel safer with saying things like, I'm actually in a hurry to get somewhere right now, so I can't stop to discuss this at the moment, you know? And at the end of the day, you can explain every in and out of your personal disability. You can show proof of it. You can show your, you know, doctor's chart. You can have your doctor on a Skype meeting with you that you post on YouTube. 
you can have every bit of proof in the world. Some people will still decide you're a faker or some people will still decide they don't think you're disabled enough to need that aid or that using that aid at your age is embarrassing or negative for whatever reason. You can't change everyone's mind. You can try, but you're going to fail. And it's stupid. And again, it's ignorant. All we can do is continue to spread all of this information as far as we can. And as I was saying earlier, it can't be left up only to the disabled community because the disabled community is a minority. It is a marginalized group, which means that some people who are non-disabled are willing to listen to us and hear us out. But unfortunately, not everyone is. And they're more likely to see someone who is like them, who is non-disabled, and listen to that person's opinion instead. So if you call yourself an ally or you say that you are a disability advocate or a patient advocate, make sure you're getting on whatever platform you have the most people and you are lifting our voices up. Don't talk over us, but share videos and resources from disabled people where we're talking about subjects like this and share literature about this issue and try to stop the spread of misinformation and help people understand how to more properly interact with disabled people in public and on the internet. That's all I have for today. I hope this video was educational and helpful for some people who have kind of been on the fence with this stuff. And if you've had that internalized ableism, I'm hoping maybe I changed some minds and you'll be a little more likely to use whatever aids you need because you deserve to live your best life. You deserve to be comfortable and safe and happy. So there's nothing wrong with using whatever you need to make that happen. But until next time, make sure you do something that makes you happy today as long as you're harming no one else in the process. And I'll see all of you in the next video. Bye-bye.